And that was kind of my first brush in with it. Cool. <coughs> um, first two albums I owned was uh, Licensed to Ill and Straight Outta Compton. Um, I was never really a, what you call a hip hop fan until I found Eminem actually. And um, I hated him at first. I'm like, who's this corny guy doing this music that I you know, enjoy? And then I couldn't get enough. And I just became fascinated with how he rhymed. I didn't know people could rhyme like that. And um, after that, you know, I did the paper chase, uh, chasing names and guest appearances, and come across people like Slug from Atmosphere and Sage Francis, who um, taught me that I could rhyme like Eminem, but still say things in a poetic form. And um, yeah, there's a million other people, but that would take forever to get into it. Uh, for me, it was watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And the albums my brother used to listen to in his car, like Bone Thugs and Army, Lil' Kim. Uh, that's the first time I heard it. I didn't really start listening to it, though. Probably my freshman year at Hussey. With, uh, my roommate introduced me to uh, the Roots. It was really the first group that I grabbed. And turned me on to that stuff. Nice. I actually, um, it was like birthday or Christmas one day. I can't remember what it was, but the first CD I bought was Ice Cube. That's it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it was probably not something I should have been listening to at the age I was, but it uh, went into my giant CD. Uh, disc man, which was like <laughs> one of the ones that you would hook up in your car back. It, it goes way back. But that was the first CD that really like got me into hip hop. I'd always like kind of heard it around with like my uncle who listened to like NWA and Public Enemy and whatever, but nothing like really grabbed me until I started hearing like these stories and these like these graphic images being spit out of my speakers. It, it took a, it took on a life of its own basically and turned me into a little hip hop monster. Okay. What kind of effect well yeah we kind of went over that so uh, how much do you listen to hip hop now, Sir? Is it like older, newer? I listen to it a lot less than I did. And I do that because I feel like if I listen to rap too much I'll get too much into a box when it comes to songwriting, and I'll forget that there's other things I can do that are outside the genre. Mm -hmm. So lately, I, and especially with the last album that I just did, it was more influenced by British pop than rap. Wow. Which is, yeah, like Florence and the Machine, Ellie Goulding, Birdie, like just British female vocalists for the most part. Um, so now it's a lot less, but when I was growing up, from ages 13 to, I don't know, 20, I would say, it was like nonstop. So was it like old school stuff? Were you listening to like new stuff? Or? Um, it was it was mostly modern. I mean, Tupac was really Tupac and a couple others were really the only ones that were old school that I really really got into. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it was like Joe Budden, Atmosphere, Brother Ali, Greaves, you know, underground eclectically. Yeah. But even when Drake came out, I got really into that right. too. So it it was, it was, it was hard a, not to. It, it was yeah, especially with Say What's Real and yeah. like yeah. All so it's, it's an eclectic array, I would say. Cool. Yeah. Um, for like 10 years, I listened to pretty much nothing but hip hop. But um, last couple of years, I've kind of backed off a little bit. Um, I listen to a lot of sad bastard music, and I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I always come back to hip hop. That's, that's my homie, and um, I owe my life to it, and I'll always come back to it. As long as there's good MCs. And uh, pretty much all the time. Um, and I, I'd say I go back to the older stuff more so than anything, especially uh, Slacker Radio and Pandora. You know, we'll plug in an artist and discover all these new artists. Yeah, like the, the technology with, with that crap is just it's phenomenal. I, mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. have a hard time understanding like how they can take like one song, like you type in an artist in a song, and then all of a sudden it plays like yeah. everything that sounds like it. Like, Good soulful music and shit that just links up to it on that. Yeah, it's like being able to discover new artists too. And, uh, yeah, even old artists. Even yeah, old right. right. And it's like rediscovering, especially the old stuff. It was it wasn't as dark. 
You guys would agree with that? Yeah. yeah. But it was still, uh, the points they were making were just as serious, so. Right. <coughs> um, do you have any vocal preferences or like favorite artists, groups, or name in England? Besides yourselves, you can't name yourself. <laughs> I mean, you can, but <laughs> like, should you share any other artists? Yeah, definitely. I would say OZ. Um, I don't know if many people have heard of him. He produces most of my stuff, but he's also a rapper. And he, I think personally he's the best rapper in Maine when he's trying. Um, OZ, Shane Rez, I would say even Spose, um, OZ, and maybe Trails. Are these all like based out of Portland? Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a lot of northern artists other than like Comfort Food, uh, Cal, Winchester, I think his name is. Um, he's like the only one I know. Oh, and new uh, Brandon Ross, who's yeah. he's actually from my area too. Yeah. I haven't checked his album yet, but I don't know. He's doing fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know a whole lot of local mm -hmm. main hip hop people. Uh, it's hard to get names when you live in a circle where your other friends don't listen to what you listen to. So you don't get the random guy that's like, oh, you gotta hear this, you gotta hear this. Um, I think it's kind of tough up here to hear non-national um, acts or whatever. Um, I know there's a bunch of people around town that I've come across through my years of performing that can rhyme like hell, but they never get up and do it really. They just can run, and once in a while they do, but I wouldn't necessarily say like I follow them because there's nothing to follow. Right. But um, there's definitely good talent out there. It's just hard to find for me at least. I don't know. You can't go into Pandora and search for main hip hop. Yeah. So that'd, that'd be nice if we did have some categories. Okay. Yeah. Number one, you're fair. Um, <laughs> 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 But speaking to like where I come from with Lewiston, I'll probably go with uh, Ness, another guy named Colasso. Because um, what they do, like if you're from Maine, you're trying to do like serious hip hop, you don't get a lot of street cred or it's not considered legitimate purely based on where you're from. And, uh, I feel like people don't, when you see people from Maine that's having the same issues as someone from Boston right. or LA um, New York. But what he's done is he's showing a side of Lewiston that like, I don't venture into, that a lot of my friends don't venture into. Like he's putting a spotlight on that. So he's he's rapping about the problems in his community. And uh, that's all that's really important to me, which I love about the guy. And, uh, he's really, really good, too. So. It's pretty cool. grimy down there. Too. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's two sides. There's, yeah. there's like the commerce side. And then there's like the police department, and then that whole area. Don't go there. No, but I don't know. That's real. Probably the realest town in Maine. Pretty real. Out there. It's like right in the center. I will, I will perform there. Let's say that. They were like, yeah, I got a show in Lewis, and I'm like, ah, can't make it. Something coming out that day. Good to know. Speak to that. I mean, like when, when all those buildings burned down, was, like, the mess was one of the first guys to put out a track. He was doing all these free shows to help raise money. Nice. Yeah. And that's raise money nice. for like what, like the damage. Yeah, like there's so many people left homeless that uh, that area of town that burned down, people don't really care about because it's the slums. Yeah. So um, they're just being shoved off the YMCA or you know not enough room. Put in shelter. Don't have family. Yeah. So. Um, so it's kind of a joke when they like when they found out which area burned down, people would do it. Well. <laughs> yeah. that, that sounds well right. Uh, but that's incredible that there's artists over there, even in this area, that would think enough to be conscious. I think I think that's a really important point is um, the origins of hip hop was uh, I think it was straight out of Brooklyn. And it came from house parties, it came from just rocking a party. And, um, but these were socially conscious like efforts 
they were helping the community, they were putting money back in, they were getting people together to have a good time instead of going out and doing whatever you might do if you weren't there, just spending uh, money elsewhere. Right. I think hip hop nowadays is seen as, you know, just rap music, but it's the four or five elements, however you want to look at it. And um, I think it does come back to having the social conscience to help the community and not perpetuate the cycles again and again, but to talk about them so that people go, oh yeah, maybe I should stop doing that. So, you know. right. so I think that's awesome that he did that. I think that's pure about that. Yeah, that's the thing. I like, started out as a really localized developer community. It wasn't an everything about now. It's the commercial hip hop. It's more about how much money they make and how they spend it. And this was all about what's going on around me. What don't I like about it? Yeah. They're not letting me do all these things. We don't have money for the arts, so we're going to take what we have and make art in the face of that. It's interesting, though, because it's like that with everything now. It's not even just hip hop, where it was about like food used to be local, farming used to be local, right. medicine used to be local, right. and everything has become a series of mass production that loses quality. Because, everything's Walmart. Yeah, everything's Walmart, and it's, that's exactly what's happened, not just, it's sad that it's infected hip hop and music in general. Yeah. I mean, every yeah. genre has happened to. Right. And it's kind of interesting when you guys mentioned all that community stuff that how much has really happened in the bigger it's, picture. It's the power of like local force. Exactly. Know? When when artists and I think when groups get together to form that kind of that powerful structure, it it only affects you know everybody who Okay, um, what kind of influences do you see in today's culture, whether it be like pop or something similar that's connected to hip hop? I read that question and I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> How do I explain that? Um, I don't know, in pop? Well, but because. Maybe not pop, but. I was going to say, hip hop has become a part of pop in a way. But I guess the biggest thing for me would be someone like Macklemore, who has taken like a social stand against something like homophobia or white privilege or something like that, like something almost academic <laughs> and infected pop culture with social equality, yeah. essentially. So I guess that would be my biggest example of today, is having an independent artist with no major label backing him other than Jimmy Iovine right. and blowing up based on a conscious lyrical effort. Uh, I think the influence is absolutely immeasurable from style clothes to language to influencing other music to movies. I mean, it's just, I don't think you can even begin to fathom how much hip hop has influenced at least the Western world. I, I can't really speak for much else because I don't really know, but um, it's just gigantic. People that don't even know they're saying things hip hop or dressing hip hop are doing it, and it's just gigantic. It's huge. Yeah, I think uh, specifically um, the idea of using loops to create music. You see in techno music and how dubstep's huge. Um, it's all over the place. I think uh, an influence that I don't like so much is how much it's infected like advertising and targeting people. Um, McDonald's, rap. McDonald's, yeah. Even that, like some of the stuff the military does, try to reach out. Yeah. yeah. So, like, oh, it's cool, bro. Oh, yeah. Okay. How do you feel about the military? Right. But to target a certain section of people is the kind of way. Using hip hop as a basically a weapon to snag kids in. Yeah. It's like a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Making it cool. All right. Uh, do you like what hip hop has to offer currently, music wise, artistically? I think it's gotten better. As I, there was a time, I want to say like 2000 or 2006, where it was like shake that left and tap it, and southern music was really starting to like overtake everything, and it was, in my opinion, awful. It was great to go to the club and dance to but it was terrible to listen to on the radio. And at that point, I kind of started to phase out of hip hop. There was some good stuff underground, like Joe Budden was releasing a bunch of good albums, and Brother Ali came in, and Greaves came in, and there was good stuff there. But it has gotten better since then, I would say with Macklemore and Drake, and 
you know, a couple of other artists that have blown up. What do you think of Kendrick? Kendrick Lamar, I'm on the fence with. Yeah. Like, I think he's got a lot to offer, but I'm not really into his style. I'm not right. into this weird delivery where you sound half like a robot and half like a uh, cat. I don't know. <laughs> I can't explain it. But I, I can't, I can't like vibe with that really well. Um, but I do think it's getting better than what it was back to shake that lap of cat right. and little John whispering weird things in my ear. <laughs> just like, I just think it's gotten so much better. <laughs> Whatever that awful so stuff was, it has definitely progressed from that. And I have a lot more hope for it. Right. I'll say that. Right. Yeah, I mean, within the past couple of years, there's definitely... A there's little been bit, improvements. Yeah, there's more reasons to tune in. And people are on the fence with Drake, but like, Drake is kind of a genius and he makes his voice an instrument and he does things that are very different than what has come out in right. the last five years. He's no Eminem, you know, he's no Tupac, sorry. But he's, you know, he's, he's good. He's making stuff that people are checking for. Exactly. That's, that's kind of what the name of the game is right now. Um, close and um, <laughs> what, what do you like current, uh, what do you think uh, hip hop has currently? Um, I actually, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> the new M album just dropped, and I've, I've been waiting to hear Alice's response. I actually have not read any of the reviews <laughs> specifically for this evening because I wanted to hear what you have to say. I'll, I'll run through that actually, and I'll compare current music with Eminem's trajectory, where um, I thought his first three albums were just better and better. And then um, he really took a slight nose dive, and then he went straight uh, <laughs> through the ground. <laughs> and um, he started to pick himself up on the last album. But this new one, I think, is pure genius. His deliveries, his rhymes, it's just insane. I cannot get enough. If I listen to it right now, if I was a singer. I've got it. No, I think there's always good and bad. Um, I'm not usually a fan of what's um, on the radio usually, and it's not because it's on the radio, it's just because I don't like it. Um, but um, I think there's always gems, there's always the young hungry guys coming up, they just want to tear heads up, and right. I love those guys, and they'll always be there. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, for the most part, I don't really like the state of it right now. Um, there's obviously artists out there that just based on what I look for, um, not really that impressed. But uh, like I said, like the Roots are still making music, Common, um, those types of guys. I think if there's a shining light, it's probably Lupe Fiasco, who has the message and the record sales more so than those other guys. But um, did you see what he did after um, after the, the whole Kendrick verse? the asshole thing, yeah. what he did with his Twitter account then. Yeah. Um, it was like all over at like hip hop blogs and crap like that. He actually like ghost wrote responses to people that <laughs> to people that Kendrick had grasped in that song. Oh, yeah. and it was insane. Like you could like literally read some of these quotables that he wrote in here the artist, like saying like he, just like the, what he wrote, the delivery wise and like you could just picture it like an MC just standing there and like giving these lines. And, yeah, he, I agree with him. He, he does. He has the sales. He has the you know the history. He, he has the the touch basically to back up. Like it always seems like you have to choose one or the other just because of the way corporations run their record sales. But um, he's really the only one I can think of currently where he didn't compromise. Okay, now there's a fun shit. If you had to make a super group, like Slaughterhouse or Wu, living, living or dead MC, is there any mind No, I don't mind if I go right. first. Questlove on drums, and then Biggie and Tupac. Ah! Oh. They felt too big. <laughs> <laughs> How many people are in this? How many people can you? Up to five? Yeah, as many as you want, basically. You can go next. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Um, because I'd like to see how they push each other, I'd, I've always wanted to see Mr. Lift and um, Sage Francis make a record together. Um, I don't even know, this is impossible, I have so many guys I like so much, but... Well, it's like the dream team thing, you know? 
Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, Red Meth is the dream team, if you ask me. Yeah. Blackout number one is just that's, that's the best still dream team. Constant, no, never. But, um, yeah, I, I'm dodging the names, but I would put together people that I'd like to see push each other lyrically and consciously. Mm -hmm. um, like, kind of almost like what Em and Royce did, or? The first time I rapped with Em and Royce, not the second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the bad news evil thing, I think. The right. first one they did, the bad news evil was good. The sequel was like Bruno Mars, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even there. <laughs> right. right. So I don't even want to go there with that. Um, oh, God. Um, living or dead? Goodness gracious. That's hey, a you have a huge. Either yeah. way. Yeah. It'd be cool to put someone dead with someone living. I don't know if that's morbid of me. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, like the two fucking M&M or... Hero and... Yeah, or like, um, maybe Big L and M&M, um, cause they like influenced you, well, m and was so influenced by Big L, um, or maybe... Or maybe like putting two groups together, like The Roots and Slaughterhouse, might be kind of cool to me. Yeah. That's all I got, I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always thought that Pac was Pac was probably the better performer and the better overall artist and Big was the MC. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, rhymes and flows for days. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Like the lyrical delivery and destruction of anybody that <laughs> came near him. Um, it was just it was off the chart. Mm -hmm. And I when I wrote this question that those were the first two names that popped up, but then I started thinking about like people that are out now and like Ortiz and Bud and, and like people that have like the same kind of just <coughs> to them. And, and, yeah, uh, it basically the slaughterhouse in general. Um, but yeah, like I, I had a hard time with, with this one too. But I I kind of went with Fox and Big and basically anybody living that I listen to now. <laughs> Try or whoever. Um, okay, top three albums. Influential or just like just, just your three? your favorite your favorite three. Um, probably Tupac, Me Against the World, Eminem, Eminem Show, or any of his first three albums. Really, any of those first three could be in there. And then for the last one. I'd probably do um, atmosphere, either Lucy Ford or I think that shit called those. Mm -hmm. I mean, so those are mine. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, Sage Francis Personal Journals. And then it's really tough. Um, uh, probably the Eminem show, and I gotta throw in, gotta go with Straight Out of Compton, I guess. Mm -hmm. Can't help it. It's been right by my side the whole life. Right, the go-to. Yeah. Um, probably Game Theory by The Roots. Let's Get Free by Dead Prez. Um, and 36 Juniors. That oh God, that's hard to beat. That's in my top three, too. I have 36 Chambers, uh, Like Water for Chocolate, and um, All Eyes on I mean, just the the desire that you could hear in every one of his tracks on both discs, really. Like, yeah. I mean, it didn't matter. Like, I think you could you could hear the sweat pouring off of him in prison. Like, you could literally, like, when you put on those albums, you know that this guy was going through shit, and like, you knew that everything he wanted to say just it happened so organically. Like I, I read a couple of things about his recording. Like he would literally go from track to track, like just Dre giving him beats and he would do one takes, one takes, one takes and like I you you record it, so you know how Oh yeah. How pretty stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that whole process is Yeah. Okay, so top three tracks. Can I just start with this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tracks. How do you, how right. do you, how do you narrow down three tracks in hip hop? I'll, I'll go first. My Summer Vacation, which is off of the Desk of Two albums. Um, shit. Uh, 
It's all from uh, Marauders. I can't remember what it is. It's all from Marauders. So basically, that album, that should be in my top three, but I, I can't remember the name of the song right now. Must be a really good one. And it is. It's, it's great. I, I'm just I'm trying to focus on my shit. You're taking the heat off of me. Um, anyway, it's all from that Marauders. That's my number two. Scars by Sage Francis, and <clears throat> I gotta pick an Eminem track. Um, I don't know. Um, I always wrap my ass off to square dance, so so much so that my stomach hurts. So I'll go with that. And um, I don't know. Maybe the Rock Wilder by the Yeah. That's an impossible question. That is an impossible question. It's an absurd question. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I guess I'm the master of Saturday. Yeah, clearly. Uh, Eminem, Eminem. I'm gonna give you like three free cards. Eminem, rock bottom. Eminem, till I collapse. Eminem, lose yourself. And then Joe Budden, I would do walk with me in my sleep and uh, uh, extraordinary love or or ordinary love part three. And then for Brother Ali, I would do tightrope. Baby girl and Dorian. That's why I'm, you can't make me narrow down. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to keep it open because I mean I, I realize that putting this this into a small little ball is the big bang's gonna happen. Yeah. Mm, that, okay, so this is the last one. Since hip hop was supposed to be a fling in music. Where do you see it going in the next 10 to 15 years? Progressing, growing? Do you want to see a change into some kind of messed up hybrid music? Or do you want to see it polish the strengths and the stuff that made it what it is now? I think that's going to depend more on the political climate than anything. Like the way, what I said earlier about America becoming more of a cor corporate entity than anything, and music becoming a corporate entity. I think if if America can lessen its corporate hold on everything, and we can get back to a more local, um, community-based nation, then I think that will affect music greatly, especially hip hop. And I see it coming a little bit at a time, you know, especially with like food trends becoming more local and people wanting to use holistic medicine more so. I think if that continues and that can have a strain on local music, then I think we'll see it progress again. But it really depends on how fed up American people are. So it depends on the hunger of American people and MCs, and also the internet is a big thing, you know? I see a lot of great MCs coming, Wax, Alyssa Marie, people coming up on YouTube that otherwise never would have been heard, dumbfounded, and it's changing everything. So I think those are two really big elements as to where we'll go from here. Um, I. Where I'd like to see it go is um, kind of where you're talking about the political climate. I'd love to see MCs try to use their influence in a way that's not go up to the clubs, but in a way that's um, look at what's going on around you, like stand up, or help that person down the road, and don't just you know flaunt what you have, but give what you have. I would love to see hip hop. Um, stand up and be a big brother figure instead of letting big brother crush down on us. Um, but I do like lyr lyrically, lately, I think it's come back more into people actually trying to have dope lyrics instead of just word salad songs, which drive me crazy. Sounds just cool. rhyming whatever rhymes to the beat, that drives me nuts. 
And I think a lot of people are coming back to actually trying to be the nastiest MC in the world. And I love that, and I hope it continues. I see it uh, going along its current course. I don't see it going anywhere, obviously. I think it's going to be uh, just saturated with a lot of the, uh, the hollow music that you hear uh, as far as uh, record companies putting out web sales and the image they want to project is definitely selling right now. It's definitely a negative image. I think that they're going to continue to push that. I think it's going to be so saturated with that sort of hip hop that you're gonna see an offshoot a lot of like what happened in the nineties with like bands like Nirvana and like hair bands. Yeah, so I think you're gonna see an alternative indie hip hop culture. Hopefully like a like a grunge hip hop? Yeah. Um, like back to basics, back to why people were going to you know punk spots or rock and roll. Kinda of like what Sarah was saying, like getting back to the whole community. Well, the other question is, with the internet, how long are record companies actually going to stick around? Because right. they're already having a downfall. Right. It, it, people go to YouTube for everything. People go to Pandora. People and you, can, and you can download a whole album. And independent artists, they can come up through that. And it's been happening left and right. right. And people are getting big without that advance, without that record company backing them. And they like the freedom. Right. And that's just going to become the trend. So thus, if you don't have that corporate hold on you, and you have that actually freedom, mm -hmm. it's going to change things. Well, it's like what happened with the Pro Era uh, group there, like Joey Badass and all that. Like they, had, exactly. they had nothing. Or they they had like a Tumblr. Yes. Exactly. Odd Future is like these kids are coming up with these trendy things. Bringing the kids. They're, they're 16, 17. <laughs> Joey Badass is 17, 18, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 18, 18. And they're just creating these waves of like weird, trendy strangeness that people are just gravitating to, yeah. especially when they direct their own videos. And that's another thing, technology, I mean, people can make their own videos and they can make them right. professional looking. Right. You don't need, you know, $50,000 anymore to go to somebody to get that. You can buy a T3i and a software editing program and you're in. And that's how people are coming up and that's creating an avenue that was never there before. Right. It's huge. We're not studying in demos. I hope you're right, but uh, <coughs> one thing I always have in the back of my mind, I might uh, be paranoid, but sites like YouTube depend so much on advertising, essentially that's why they're there. And so um, the people that feed money into the website when it comes down to it are going to control what's, what's broadcast. And it, it's good right now, and you are absolutely right. That is a good thing, but I just feel like sooner or later, once it start, stop, starts like affecting their bottom line, you're going to see some, some crap dance in some way. Uh, you think they'll block people that are... Well, it happened in Pakistan. Was, they banned YouTube yeah. in Pakistan. And wow. that's hurt. Like, Adil Omar, I don't know if you've heard of him, he was like the only rapper in there. And it hurt him really badly. So you're absolutely right. Politically or, you know, commercially, things could change in that element. And then things could progress again. I agree. And the doors of what we consider terrorism in this country. Long wide open. Right. So uh, it's, it's scary to think that like, sooner or later any form of dissension is going to be considered. It'll create musical terror. That's a good point. But that could be, you know, that could be the next That already favorite. did happen, actually, with the Boston terrorist act, um, the, the bombing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And this kid made a song about being a part of it, and he got arrested and is in jail yes. currently. That actually wow. happened. So That's insane. I think that is a good point that futuristically that. Homeland Security couldn't crack down. Right. But again, that's all connected to politics. Yeah, I mean, it goes right back to what you were doing. <coughs> well, that is, that is all the questions I have, and that's all of our time. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week. I'm <laughs> 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 uh, just kidding. Uh, but see you guys. Uh, 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 uh,